I recently tore down an Nexus microinverter and along with two Nexus microinverters which have failed, uh, Dazabasia also sent me a Chinese like eBay type inverter. It's a 500 watt 24 to 48 volt MPPT microinverter and it's uh, obviously it's Chinese. This is really interesting because now something you have to know about solar power and all the electronics associated with it is that this is aimed at the American market really, uh, or at least the non-European market. And an easy way to see this is to look at how non-standard and how crappy the construction outside is. So yeah, you have to imagine, and there's this really big rift in the world um, of solar. You have Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, essentially mostly European countries that have had solar power. There has been a reasonable amount of solar power and development here for a long time. And on the other hand, there is the US, uh, to a lesser extent China, that has had a uh, kind of a shorter, less, less developed path to solar power. And this, you can see the remnants of this in basically everything. Like here in the Netherlands, there are very strict rules on uh, the type of equipment you can have. You cannot have uh, island mode converters, so your converters have to shut down when the main supply falls out. You, there are obviously island mode converters, but you have to have a different type of installation for that. There are standardized connectors. Uh, there are strict rules on the type of enclosures you have to have, the lifetime, like just the fact that these things are built to last 10 or 20 years uh, means you have a certain like minimum standard of construction and you cannot have stuff like fans, like you can have fans actually, but uh, they have to blow over a piece of material that does not have the risk of blowing dust in between your components and that kind of stuff. All has to be conformally coded. Um, there are these standard connectors, so MC4 connectors. This, this type of arrangement with banana plugs is just ridiculous. Uh, the fact that there are fuses here, ridiculous. Uh, similarly, like this kind of control panel, I'll focus. Um, uh, this, is, this is all just very weird. Th this is reminiscent of inverters we had about 10 to 15 years ago here. Uh, very old fashioned type solar inverters. That doesn't mean it's bad and doesn't mean it's bad quality. Like the fact that it's a solar inverter probably means it's relatively good quality for a Chinese supply. All right, we're inside and like immediately we can already see very big differences between the Nexus and this one. Uh, the board, it seems to have maybe a sprinkling of conformal coating. It's not clear. There is some kind of Obviously, something has been sprayed, but if I if I like try to scratch it, it's it doesn't seem to be conformal coating. And besides, uh, they use connectors that cannot be conformally coated. So like this this connector is it's impossible to make this watertight. As far as connections go, this is uh, pretty good. This is brass. These um, these poles are well, they are banana plugs. It's kind of kind of strange that they. I think they just fucked up the the position here or something. They they meant to do it the other way around, but they ended up having to let these banana plugs go with a jumper wire all the way to the other side. Fuse holders are soldered. And this is actually a problem, in case you don't know. The, the fuse rating is 30 amps and fuses, as I will say, probably many times in all my videos, fuses are for preventing fire. And that's the only thing fuses are good for. Fuses do not limit your maximum current to some value. A 30 amp fuse means that given an infinite amount of time, if you keep 30 amps going through, it will eventually fail. Usually uh, the fuse ratings are chosen such that, for instance, it's a one second rating. So one second of 30 amps means it fails. The higher the current, the shorter the amount of time, but you can get often many kiloamps through a fuse before it blows, only for a very short amount of time, maybe like a millisecond. Anyway, so the fuse, if you solder these terminals to the fuses, 
these solder connections will heat up. A solder connection will usually fail at high current fuse connections. You always want to use a screwed in bus bar, like a brass bar or something like that, if you use very high current fuses. 30 amps is maybe, maybe I'm just overblowing this, maybe 30 amps is okay still. Uh, but for instance, for one of my projects, I had a 200 amp converter, 200 amp four volt converter. That, like a fuse will not help you there. The only thing you can do there is do active current measurement. I tried fuses, but the, the surge rating of a fuse is so high that you will probably cause fire in the, the rest of the circuit uh, before the fuse blows. So it's just generally looking at the layout. Uh, it's a very straightforward uh, inverter uh, with maximum power point tracker. So the power goes in here. It goes into a couple of big caps. Seems to be no name brand, so probably pretty shitty quality. Uh, it's 105C rated though. Uh, then there is a bunch of transistors on the heatsink here, a separate heatsink, interestingly, even though on the other side, you can see the whole inverter uh, topology uses MOSFETs or transistors of some kind and diodes. They even mark them with diodes. That's interesting. That are connected to the outside housing. So I don't know why they bothered with an extra heatsink. This is just extra expense. Uh, they should have just uh, put them on the outside casing. Yeah, so we have the DC bus here, the MPPT, and then it goes over to here. And I think if they have transistors on here, you only need four transistors and I see five. So you would expect this is the primary bridge that goes into this transformer, which makes the 50 Hertz sine wave. And then it just goes through some filtering. And that's what I see. Uh, but there's also, there's like way too many, there's four more transistors here, it seems, and there are five diodes. Oh, I see. Uh, there's, there's links for 110 and 220 volts. So this is probably also a voltage doubler situation, and depending on which tap they use. So what I think they're doing is they're doing a fairly high frequency step up from the uh, low panel DC voltage up to some higher uh, sort of kind of DC voltage. And then they do an extra inversion step to 50 Hertz with these transistors. I think that's the general idea, the general gist of it. All right, I got to get out. And um, first of all, just a small thing. The screws do not have Loctite on them. And that's a big problem for longevity because what you have here is you have steel screws, steel pan screws in an aluminum enclosure and the aluminum enclosure is getting hotter and colder and hotter and colder. So it will slowly wiggle out these screws and the sides will fall off and you'll get a electrocution hazard. Uh, that, is, that is actually a problem. This will never get through something like UL without better assembly. And this goes for multiple things in here. And like there are small bars holding down these transistors to the casing. Those also don't have any Loctite on them. That's a bit of a downer because otherwise the construction is pretty good. It's very well organized. And um, if we just turn it over, first of all, uh, kind of weird that they have these these protrusions on the PCB just, just to guide them, I guess, just to like have a limit but they don't have any damping material. So if you drop it, uh, this PCB, if you drop it like that, uh, you still run the risk of these PCB fingers breaking off and the whole thing just sliding back and forth and fatiguing wires. So nice try, I guess, uh, but this is not good mechanical uh, engineering. They really need to take a lesson from uh, like any certification agency. So here we start in the general control area and we see again a microchip it is a pic 16 f 877a which is like a medium powerful like pic 16f is fine uh, it's like one of those 8 slash 16 bit microcontrollers however <laughs> i don't know if you can see this 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 i see extremely sloppily soldered insert a close-up here. Um, this is this is a hack job. Um, 
It's a UCC 2806D PWM controller. Let's see, yeah, it's on the primary side. So this actually does the uh, power conversion. 11358. This is this is pretty dull. This is just a lot of passives and some, uh, I guess, some power supply stuff. I see a Zener diode here. Uh, lots of reduction. Not super super much to see. Further on, uh, here we see the uh, the input for the transformer. The transformer is here. Uh, current sense resistor, uh, 10 milliohm here, and two current sense resistors here for the half bridge. It's obviously a half bridge configuration because there's two transistors on this lag and two transistors on this lag. So this is very likely just a double forward converter. Could theoretically be an LLC. And I'm seeing that because on the secondary side there's a big inductor and there is a capacitor here, which does... Now the capacitor is not in series like usually if it's a if it's a proper llc um you'll have the capacitor on the primary side and because that's just the easiest well actually in this case that's a good point the capacitor is usually on the primary side because then you can use a very low value film capacitor with a very high voltage uh, reading which is much cheaper and much easier to do um, but here obviously the primary side is a low voltage side so I could imagine it's an LLC, but it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, here on the secondary side, uh, we also see lots of diodes and some Zener diodes. So this is definitely a uh, gate drive. Uh, these are MOSFETs. So uh, that just does some gate drive. You, you don't put potentiometers on these things. Uh, this is just ripe for abuse, especially with a device that's so easy to take out. Uh, any modern inver inverter shouldn't have uh, user uh, tweakable stuff. Should all be just done in software. Now on the top side, these resistors here, I'm pretty sure these are just programming resistors to tell the microcontroller uh, what it uh, what it's supposed to be. It's like a 220 volt, 50 hertz model or something. And these are extremely sloppy and like somebody did some soldering on this package but then took it off or something and uh, this is just barely on and this to me tells that they made a uh, they made like a generic inverter supply and then they just uh, tagged it with the resistors and kind of tweaked the potentiometer and did some other stuff like there's another uh, there's a link here that says 220 volt model so it's it's just a, a crap way of doing this. The, the issue I take with this whole inverter, it is pretty decent quality. I have to say it is all right compared to other Chinese stuff. It's got a proper PCB. It's got a reasonable topology. It's well laid out. Uh, it has at least some attention to detail here and there. Uh, but the real details, the details that matter for very long term use are missing. And this is just exemplary of this uh, non-mature market where people are uh, trying to get the lowest possible purchase price instead of the lowest possible total cost of ownership. So it's all back together now and I guess I should uh, try to form a conclusion about this. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's probably gonna live for two or three years. Uh, you have to imagine these things are constantly running every day, day in, day out, they're producing power. So uh, something like this has a much shorter lifetime than an equally built power supply for your, for your computer, for instance. And even good quality power supplies, I've had Antec power supplies fill on me within five years. You really have to have super good quality to uh, survive for a long time and this is definitely not going to survive for 10 years or something like that it's going to fill in a couple of years. the construction quality is lacking uh, some components are not very well soldered uh, some connections are probably going to shake loose or come loose through thermal effects and the primary capacitors are almost definitely going to fill at some point although the fan that they use uh, 
uh, does actually blow over those capacitors so I am not too fussed I guess but of course the fan is going to fail too I'm in two minds about this I wouldn't buy this if you are a prospective uh, solar panel buyer in any case a 500 watt uh, inverter is not going to be enough for any solar installation like even the tiny installation is one and a half kilowatts or something um, but even then I would just go for one of the better ones probably cheaper in the long run so uh, see you later today we're taking a look at something I've been uh, really excited about this is an Anaxis solar micro inverter fellow pro user by the name of Database he sent these to me two of these and a replacement Chinese inverter and he sent these because and he, he made videos of this uh, 